Collector Archive Services presents Collecting Star Wars. Visit our website at CollectorArchive.com for grading, preserving, and custom displays of your collectible toys, video games, and sports memorabilia. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and comment below, and subscribe to our channel for more awesome collector videos. Hello everyone, I'm Chris from CAS. For today's CAS 101, we have episode 1 in our Star Wars Carback series, which takes an in-depth look at all the various vintage U.S. Kenner Carbacks. From 12 to 92, we will look at all the changes Kenner made throughout the years, from adding characters to special offers, from product changes to variation, and all the fun in between. I'll be your host as we take an epic journey exploring one of the most successful and valuable toy lines of all time, starting with episode 1, 5 Facts About 12 Backs. Fact number 1. It was the first of times, it was the last of times. Just like every journey has its first step and every saga has its beginnings, the 12 backs are starkly different from any subsequent card backs that would follow. With a primarily black themed background and animated renderings of the first 12 figures, the 12 backs were not only the first card backs in the Kenner series, but also the last to feature animated drawings of the characters. The actual toys are barely there at all. Also missing is any real reference to the infamous mantra to collect them all. I guess at that point there really wasn't much to collect. Along with artist renderings of the characters, we also got a brief description of the characters' accessories and action features. This is where we learned that Sam people didn't use a space crowbar to assault Luke, but instead the ever more menacing get a fairy stick. As the line evolved, so too did the card backs, though no one would be quite as instantly recognizable as the 12 backs. The 12 back series contained, you guessed it, 12 figures all of which were stocked with the core characters we knew and loved from the movies. Included in the series are Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, Chewbacca, R2-D2, C-3PO, Darth Vader, Stormtrooper, Jawa, Sand People, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and the Death Squad Commander. Although the Death Squad Commander would later be named Star Destroyer Commander, you'll learn more about that in our 21 back series. In addition to the first 12 features, the 12 back series also gave us our first offer, Although the card is considered offerless due to the fact that there is no indication of the free offer on the front of the card. The offer was for the action figure display stand, which would later be released at retail, albeit in fancier packaging. Now before I move on to fact number two, here are two fun bonus facts about fall backs. Bonus fact number one. The display stand offer on the US vintage card back does show nine of the original 12 figures standing on the display. This being the only place where photorealistic images of the actual product is shown. Missing from the photo are the Death Squad Commander, Sand People, and Jawa. It would have been interesting to see if they were going to include a cloth cape or a vinyl cape Jawa on that, and maybe he was excluded because they were going through that change. Makes you wonder. Bonus fact number two. While every character in the 12 back line had a long and distinguished run, only the Jawa and Stormtrooper appear on every major US card back. Vader and Obi-Wan get a nod for making it almost all the way, but photo variations on these mean that the original image, the image that appears on their rookie card, if you will, didn't endure as long as Jawa and Stormtrooper. Perhaps that is why Jawa and Stormtrooper are among the most popular characters for focus collectors to collect. Fact number two, there are four major card back variations. Well, five if you want to get technical. And we got really clever with the names, we named them 12A, 12B, 12C, 12D, and sometimes 12E. From 12A through 12E, the 12 back design was tweaked to reflect production changes with the figures, as well as the update oversight toys that remained on the shelves when the Empire Strikes Back line launched. The 12A, 12B, and 12C backs can be sort of subtle with their differences, while the 12D and 12E are pretty much unmistakable. If one simply would like to know what their card back is at 12A, the easiest way to tell is to look for the absence of the word free typed in bold letters in the description of the action figure display stand. The 12As do not say free, while the 12B and 12C backs will. Free will be on the right hand side of the two columns and is easily recognizable. All right, that's the easy part. Now let's get technical. If you notice, there is a section to the right of the figure lineup that describes the functionality of the lightsabers. We are primarily interested in the animated picture of the lightsaber in the first paragraph and the number of lines of text in the second paragraph. 12A card backs show a retracted double telescoping saber in the first image. At that point, perhaps there was still hope that the double telescoping sabers would make it into the final product. 
Sadly, we know they didn't. There is also five lines of text in the paragraphs describing how to use a double telescoping saber. With the 12B, it would appear that Kenner had resigned themselves to the fact that the double telescoping sabers were a lost cause. This is reflected in the airbrush extended tip being added to the lightsaber in the first image. If you look at the picture closely, this alteration is very obvious. The text description in the second paragraph remains the same, with the telltale five lines identical to the 12A. With the 12C, the image of the lightsaber in the first section remains the same as it was on the 12B card back. However, the paragraph in the second section was simplified and revised to have only three lines of text. In summary, if you have a retracted tip saber in the first image and five lines of text describing the second image, you have a 12A. If you have an airbrushed extended tip lightsaber in the first image and five lines of text describing the second image, you have a 12B. If you have three lines of text describing the second image, you have a 12C. I mean, how much easier could it get, right? I'd like to tell you what gets easier, but the variations on the 20 backs are staggering, to say the least. The 12D or 1232 back is easily distinguishable from the others and that there's a large sticker covering the by then expired action figure display offer. In an attempt to meet demand, Kenner produced 12 backs at a blistering pace and by the time the Empire Strikes Back had premiered, there were overstocked 12 backs still sitting in inventory. In order to promote the next wave of figures released for Empire, Kenner placed a large sticker over the action figure display stand and in doing so created yet another 12 back variation. The 12D card backs are unique in that they are compromised of 12A, 12B, and 12C card backs, creating a mind-boggling number of potential figure card back combinations. While a majority of the 12Ds are covered 12Cs, both 12As and 12Bs exist. The card back is significantly less common than the first three, however they do show up occasionally. All 12 figures have been found with this sticker, with the Luke and Chewie being among the most common. The Stormtrooper and Jawa are extremely scarce, with perhaps one or two of each known to exist. For now, there has never been a report of any double telescoping sa saber showing up on this card back or a vinyl cave Jawa, but we can't rule out the possibility. The 12E card back is so scarce and so obscure that it's often skipped altogether. The 12E card back features a secret figure offered for Boss found commonly on the 12C card back. Today, I believe two carded R2D2s exist with the sticker, as well as a Chewbacca card back only. These card backs are super scarce, but they do exist. If you find one, especially one featuring any other character other than Chewie and R2, you'll have made a major discovery, and CIS will want to know about it. Fact number three, figure variation. The toy role was taken by Storm in 1977 when Star Wars was released. Kenner had secured the rights to the toys but had no real expectation that the movie would be a success, meaning that Star Wars was a worldwide phenomenon before they even started work on the toy line. To say that Kenner was rushed to get these toys on the shelves is an understatement. That's not to say that the first release was lacking in quality, but the sheer amount of variations in the first release implies that they were, at the very least, a work in progress. From weapons redesigns to wardrobe changes, almost every figure receives some sort of revision in the debut set. To keep it simple, we will look at these on a figure-by-figure -figure basis. Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker can be found with a double telescoping saber as well as a standard saber, although the double telescoping saber or DT saber is significantly more valuable and significantly less common. The double telescoping saber exists on all three major card decks, with 12C being the most common, followed by 12A and 12B. The abundance of 12C DT Luke suggests that they may have been overstocked from the early bird set. Luke can also be found with a matte paint scheme on, on his pants, as well as a glossy paint scheme, and also brown eyes and black eyes, although these minor paint scheme variations don't seem to have a significant impact on the value. Please note, if you have a figure you're not sure if it's a double telescoping saver, do not open the package. Contact a CAS representative and we can help you determine if it's a DT saver or a standard saver. It has happened. Don't be that person. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Old Ben can be found with both a double telescoping saber and a standard saber. The double telescoping saber version is the scarcest of the three figures found with DT sabers and are only ever found on 12A car backs. The DT Ben is considered to be the scarcest and most valuable production figure in the vintage Kenner line. His standard blue saber is common and found on all major car backs. Obi-Wan is also available with the white and gray hair versions, a variation that will continue for a long time. A long time. It's an impression. Anyway. <laughs> Darth Vader. Darth Vader is available with a double telescoping saber as well as a standard saber. 
Vader is more common than Obi-Wan, but significantly less common than Luke. DT Sabres are typically found on 12A cards, although a 12B has been found to exist. Han Solo Han Solo undergoes the most significant and inexplicable change of all the figures in the series. Originally issued with a small head, this likeness of Han was far more true to how he appears in the movie. Well, the large head just looks bad. I don't know. I don't get it. But for whatever reason, this is the head we got for the rest of the vintage Kenner run, with one exception, which you'll find out in a few more episodes. The large head, the small head version was available on 12A, B, and C. The large head version has never been found on a 12A. It's kind of scarce on a 12B and is just as common as the small head on a 12C. Chewbacca. Chewie came with the standard bowcaster as well as the translucent blue-green bowcaster, sometimes referred to as the green bowcaster. It's not truly green, so it's sort of that clearish blue-green you see when people shine the light through it. Uh, the translucent bowcaster is the same one that was found in the early word set, so it's also thought to be potentially an overstock being put on the card. R2-D2. While on the subject of early bird figures, R2-D2 came with both a light blue paint deco on his dome and a dark blue paint deco on his dome. The dark blue was found in the early bird set as well. This variation can be subtle with the dark blue dome version carrying a slight price premium over the light blue one. C-3PO. C-3PO was available with a silvery coloring as well as a shiny gold coloring. Neither seems to command a significant value over the other, but the gold one is more aesthetically pleasing. At least I like it more. Last but certainly not least is a Jawa. The Jawa was available with both the legendary vinyl cape and the more common but still very lovable cloth cape version. While not the most valuable 12 bag variation, the vinyl cape Jawa is one of the most popular and sought after figure variations. Discontinued early in the run, vinyl cape Jawas are most commonly found on 12A card backs but have been found on 12B and 12C cards. Ironically, the cloth cape Jawa on the 12A card is probably the hardest to find 12A variation, excluding the DT figures, of course. Fact number four, we really do care about footers. When it comes to collecting first edition, Star Wars fans are known to take things to an absolute extreme. A 12A will get a higher price than a 12B, a 12B will get a higher price than a 12C, a 12C will get, well, it ends at 12C, but you get the point. Collectors want the absolute first revisions available. With 12X, you can beat a 12A with a 12A SKU or SKU footer, and you can beat a 12A SKU footer with a 12A white footer. And a race had the absolute first version of the first run of Star Wars figures, even that seemingly meaningless piece of cardboard on which each figure stands can have an enormous effect on the value. Thought to have been early salesman samples and likely not to have seen any traditional distribution, 12As with white figure stands are hard to find under any defined metric. These are often the earliest versions of the figures, meaning that Luke can often be found with a DT saber along with Ben and Vader, although not DT versions do exist. Little is known about the white figure stand and not every character is available on one. To date, the following figures are known to exist. Luke, Leia, Han, Chewbacca, R2, Darth Vader, Stormtrooper, and Ben Kenobi. This edition is very scarce. As is this video, I'm not aware of any one person that has a complete set of known examples. The 12A skew footers are more common than the white footers, but less common than the traditional 12A. A skew footer card will have the unique SKU or SKU number that appears in the upper left hand corner of each card deck printed on the footer as well. Sometimes these are hard to see and require carefully tipping the figure upside down to see the numbers. Luke Skywalker and C-3PO have bent footers, and with them, the skew, the skew is printed on the side of the footer. These are both the easiest to read among, but the hardest to find with the skew footer, so take that for what it's worth. Like with the white footers, not every character is available with a skew footer. Those none, known to exist are Luke, Leia, Chewbacca, R2, 3PO, Darth Vader, Stormtrooper, and Ben Kenobi. This set is tough to complete, especially if you consider that the DT Sabres as well as traditional Sabres exist on all three Force-wielding characters. Beyond needing patience and luck to complete this set, you'll also need lots and lots of credit. May the Force be with you. Fact number five. Miscellaneous facts and variations, because why not? Miscellaneous fact number one. The case of the missing price box. While on the subject of skew numbers, right below the skew number printed on the upper left of the card back, there's a white rectangle area reserved for retail price stickers. 
The space only exists on 12 backs and 20 A backs, meaning you can generally tell if a figure is a 12 back without even turning it over. I wouldn't buy a figure without verifying that it was a 12 back first, but chances are, if there's a white box on front, you have a 12 back. Miscellaneous fact number two more Jawa shenanigans. Cycling back to the Jawa, a wardrobe change was not enough. The Jawa bubble changed three times during the 12 back run, and the insert behind him changed twice. The Vinyl Cave Jawa has its very own bubble. This bubble is small and form fitting with a long stem that swells out past the figure. The stem, incidentally, were a feature on every bubble that allowed the figure and card to stand upright at retail. This feature allowed the figures to stay standing in the point of sale bins and allowed retailers to stand them on shelves if they didn't want to hang them. The Vinyl Cave Jawa got a wide stem because the figure was so scrawny that they needed the extra bubble to keep him standing. When the Cloth Cave version came out, Kenner began issuing the Jawa using an r 2 2 bubble. This one is easy to spot because it's the least unique bubble of the three, basically a rectangle with a stem mounted flush with the bubble. Finally, Jawa was given the bubble that would stay with him throughout the Empire Strikes Back run. The bubble that is angled and wider at the top than the bottom with a wide footer for added balance. Jawa also had both a yellow cardboard figure insert and a clear figure insert to keep him from moving around in the R2-D2 bubble, which was wider than it needed to be for a figure of the, his stature. For those keeping the score, a full run of 12-back Jawas includes 12A vinyl cape, 12A cloth cape, R2-D2 bubble, cardboard tray, 12A cloth cape, R2-D2 bubble, clear tray, 12B vinyl cape, 12B standard bubble, cloth cape, 12C vinyl cape, 12C standard bubble, cloth cape, 12D standard bubble, cloth cape. And that's just the list so far. New discoveries are being made all the time. In fact, 12 back super collectors trying to get one of every 12 back variation will have an excess of 100 12 backs in their collection. It's a goal few have reached and most of us can only dream trying. Miscellaneous fact number three, the note to consumers hiding behind C-3PO. Finally, there's a variation that I credit myself for discovering. So far it hasn't made me famous, but there's still time. I only get better with age. <laughs> the gold electroplating on C-3PO looked great, but it also tended to glue his limbs in place, at least until you started playing with them. At some point, the decision was made to inform customers that the limbs would be stiff by adding a paragraph explaining how to break the limbs free prior to using them. The paragraph says, C-3PO's joints are stiff. Grasp arms at shoulder joints, legs at hip joints, and firmly pull forward to loosen. Turn head left or right. Up until recently, it was thought that this paragraph was added to the 21 back versions of C-3PO, although I happened to find one on a 12C card. This paragraph seemed to appear randomly on card backs until the figure was updated they have removable limbs during the 45 back card run. This variation does not seem to affect value much at this point, but as of this video, my mint on card version is the only one we know about. So that's my five facts about 12 backs. If you have any more facts that you'd like to add, please drop a comment below. And stay tuned for our next video, Five Facts About 20 Backs, where the variations are seemingly endless, but my charm makes learning fun. Until next time, keep collecting. Bye.